Hello lovely people, I welcome you once again to Bright and Clarice channel. In today's episode, I want us to estimate the cost of a four bedroom house or a five bedroom house, a standard four bedroom house, whether you want to do with a ground floor or you want to do a first floor and a secret roofing, you understand, or just a ground floor, four bedroom, okay, and then you do the roofing. I get in. so a standard four bedroom I believe will be a hall in the ground floor you have your big kitchen you have your kitchen store and then you have your visitors room at the ground floor with the bathroom within you have the visitors washroom or the powder room okay and then that's it I think maybe you have a utility room or maybe a laundry room at the ground floor and then we'll probably we'll have a staircase going upstairs and then we'll have a three bedroom at the first floor and so maybe a small family area you understand you will have some balcony okay and all the rooms at the first floor will have their own bathroom you understand and maybe a small kitchen net where you can have maybe we we'll call it a pantry are you with me so this is a standard four bedroom it can be a five bedroom house depending on how you want it okay i'm not talking about you having a swimming pool or whatsoever i'm talking about the structure itself now so i believe by now you should have your drawing and once you have your drawing you have your 3d representation which i mentioned earlier in my earlier episode so you should have what we call a foundation plan once you have your foundation plan you are ready to demarcate that on the land you have to call the draft man who did the drawing for you to come to the site okay your masons and those who are going to do the digging which is digging of the trench all of them should be available now mostly the person who does the profiling is the person who did the drawing for you okay a mason who is well qualified can also do that so one is profiling profiling is where they demarcate whatever is on the drawing onto the land they demarcate the hall the bedrooms and everything onto the land they demarcate that you know you understand so mostly they charge 1000 and above some people can even take 500 so can take 600 yeah some people don't charge that much but for standard i just put it 1000 some people can come and say give me 2000 that is too much Okay, then digging should be within 2,500 to 3,000. That's when the boys will begin with you. If you're in Accra, that is it. If you're somewhere in the rural or Cape Coast, the, the, the cost is a little bit lower. Then you need 30 pieces of wawa board. This is an uh, estimation, you understand? Yeah, 30 pieces should be enough to cover the entire you know, area where they want to do the demarcation or digging of the trench. And then you will need nails, okay? You need two by two pegs, okay? And then you will need a rope. So approximately for you to do your trench and all of that, you're estimating around 5,000. Your estimate should be around 5,000 Ghana cities, not dollars, not pounds, 5,000, okay? Because you have to be strategic. This is a four bedroom house. This is not some 20 bedrooms or 100 bedrooms. This is just a standard four bedroom house because that's, that is a trend now. If you go to the online market, people are building real estate and they're even building it not even on a 100 by 70. They are building on a 50 by 50 plot of land and it's a four bedroom house and they are selling it some some amount i don't want to mention them so the process is what i'm giving you so here you would have finished your digging your trenches everything have been dug profiling digging you need wawa board and this wawa board is not just the cyber board cyber board are beautiful we use them for pillars so that one is later remember that the 30 pieces of bush cut wawa board that you've bought you are going to use it throughout your project. Don't let them tell you, go and buy another Wawa board again. Please note it down. These 30 pieces of Wawa board, we are going to use it. This is a bush cut. So we are going to use it. Don't buy any Wawa board until I tell you so. Nails, um, two by two pegs and rope, approximately 5,000 is okay for you to start digging your trenches for your four bedroom house okay uh, there can be 20 bedrooms at the top but this is the ground floor we are talking about the trench you understand so you can see that the wawa board have been placed along the peripheral 
all across four square okay and then the digging will be within are you getting it yes once they put the wall board all across they put some nails on top of it okay they put some nails and then they pull the rope from one point to the other in order to get what we call the grid line and that will give them a straight line for them to demarcate the rooms onto the ground are you getting it yes that's why you need those nails uh -huh. and then the rope that's what they use the rope for okay yes so profiling is very very important don't let anybody just do the profiling profiling determine how your house is going to look like by the end of the day if the person doing the profiling does not do it well your house will look crooked i bet ya or down i bet ya and your street it should be 90 degrees the profiling should be done such that your house will be positioned in a way that it will be exactly a square 90 degrees so the draft man should know his work you understand some draft men they can only draw they don't know how to do profiling so make sure you get an experienced person to do your profiling for you the boys ready at the site after the profiling they start digging now the depth of every foundation standard is three feet six three feet and a quarter are you getting it three feet six okay where the pillars are going to be will be four feet so they have to go one foot extra for the pillars are you getting the point so the normal foundation depth is three feet six and then the pillars they go one foot extra so when you measure that of the pillar it should give you four feet are you getting it so this is how it all begins the whole building have been demarcated on the land and the boys are digging now from here you should know the number of pillars you have so on your drawing your draftsman should give you what we call a foundation plan and that's what they use for the profiling the foundation plan the foundation plan will tell you the rooms and then the pillars or the columns as they call it so from there you know how many iron rods that you need or you people call it a rebar we will call it iron rods yeah in ghana for your friend iron rods i brought for phone move friend rebar 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 yeah friend iron rods so you know you have to count the number of pillars you have on your foundation plan you understand you need to count them in my case i have 25 pillars you understand i have a total number of 25 pillars are you getting it for my entire structure it could be 30 pillars based on how your draftsman design your building it could be 35 it could be 15 it could be 20 it could be 22 you have to count yours depending on your design mine is 25 so i'm using mine as an example so my foundation the total number of pillars when i go and count the pillars i got a uh, 25 pillars this will help me explain the quantity of iron rods that i need so i want you guys to note it down counting the pillars will help me you know come to a conclusion as to how much iron rods that i need a steel bender should not come to you and say buy two ton of 16 mm one ton of this and one ton and everything is ton 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 no 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 you should know foundation we use 16 standard if you are rich you go for 18 super rich you go for 20 mm but mostly 16 is good for just a first floor building you understand for a first floor building we use 16 mm for from the foundation you understand so 16 mm rod you should know the quantity that makes a ton most people don't know get a price list from ko for it it will give you all the details from 8 mm all the way to 20 mm so how many pieces makes a ton you should know so that once you cut cal you calculate your pillars you will know that after the estimation you will know that i need to buy one ton 20 pieces of 16 mm or one ton of 14 mm plus maybe additional three pieces you understand you should know all this so i'm going to guide you so the foundation is still being dug it might take them three to four days depending on how tough the land is now the cost that i placed there two thousand five hundred to three thousand 
mostly sometimes it also depends on how hard the land is if the land is very soft you have to begin quickly to reduce it even 2000 will be okay for me i will try and pay 2000 if the land is very hard you have to consider certain factors they feel they go through a lot of pain if the land is rocky they charge you more three thousand they will take from you because some people will come they will dig 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 because it's hard they will leave and go they will take their money and then up to the length that they have dug they will take that money and go away so you have to cushion them a little bit in order to be able to dig your foundation or your trenches for you properly so if the land is very hard you have to pay extra you understand but standardly, from 2000 up to 3000 you have to bargain. Looking at the current inflation now, the people might charge from 4000 but hey, that is outrageous. It's just a standard four-bedroom, you understand, or even a five-bedroom. So from 2000 all the way to 3000 you can be within that range and bargain with them. Yours is to bargain to reduce to the lowest point, you understand, yes. So... The depth of the foundation or the trench is 3 feet 6. The pillars is 4 feet. You understand? So when they lay their blocks, they are going to lay up to 4 feet high. Are you getting the point? Yes. So that's it. So as of now, you know that your trench is ready. You have counted your pillars and you know how many pillars you have. In my case, I have 25 pillars. So it's going to help me. You know estimate how much iron rods that i need for the entire pillars are you getting the point yes so from here everything is done i remember i said those wawa board you bought the 30 pieces of the wawa board this is a bush cut wawa board you are going to use them throughout the project until i tell you so until i tell you you have to buy another one but once you buy these 30 pieces of wawa board please don't buy any board anymore don't buy any board anymore all right so that is done then we move on to the next stage this time you need to buy one trip of a stone and a sand your contractor will tell you no it's not true this is just the foundation so we focus much on the foundation so how much we need maybe your foundation maybe it's a superstructure or a big a big project yeah that's fine but this is a standard four bedroom so i'm basing all my argument on a standard four bedroom or a five bedroom okay so please don't get it wrong i don't want somebody coming and you know writing something down there this is a standard four bedroom you can take away your swimming pool and whatsoever a standard four bedroom or a five bedroom so one trip of a sand or one trip of a stone is okay now the wawa board like i mentioned is going all around four square and we are not touching the wawa board okay we are not buying anymore okay and even the pegs we are we are going to utilize those pegs so we have to be vigilant in all the steps of the project you have to be more vigilant are you getting it so now let's move on to the pillars already i told you you need to count the pillars from the foundation you need to count them so now we are here now the pillar the iron rod that is holding that is for the pillars okay if you count the iron rod they are total of six three at the at the front and three at the back making a total of six now this six is coming from just one piece of a rod yes just one piece of a rod is giving you this total six pieces when you stretch one piece of an iron rod the length of an entire piece of an iron rod is about 29.999 feet before it was 30 feet but i don't know for some reason they decided to remove one inch but let's consider it is 30 feet because 29.99 is almost the same so it's 30 feet now 30 feet will cut it into three when we cut into the three that is giving us 10 feet 10 feet 10 feet so that is giving us the iron rod for the front for the other side we have to take another full length of an iron rod and cut it into three and then we get the back so we when we take two full rods we get one pillar are you getting the point when we take one full length of an iron rod and another full length that is a two full length of an iron rod cut into three will give us six pieces of what he's holding there you understand what he's holding there is 
So let's this an example. So when we take one piece of this, okay, and we stretch it wide open, okay, it's giving us 30 feet. This 30 feet, we will cut it into three, means that it is 10, 10, 10. Are you getting it? Again, we'll take another one piece more and cut it into three, and then we have six pieces. So it means that if we take two pieces of this rod here, a full length of this rod, two of them, is giving us one pillar. Are you getting a point? Yes, so two full rod of this one is giving us one pillar, which is giving about six pieces, 10 feet high, 10 feet high, 10 feet high, 10 feet high. Are you getting a point? Now, if two of these is giving me one set of pillar, then how many do I need? That is where you should know the total pillars you have. So when you count the total pillars in your foundation plan, and then you know that you are doing six rod per iron uh, pillar, you should count it. So if these two, if two of this is giving me one pillar, how many of these should give me 25 pillars? Because already my foundation is 25 pillars. I get no point. So I'll multiply 2 by 25 pillars. I get no point. 2 by 25 pillars. And that is giving me 50 pieces of this full length. I need 50 pieces of this full length to give me the entire pillars for my, for my, for my foundation. And then I have to buy 8 mm for what we call the rings. So the rings is what the guy is doing in your shot. There's 8 mm are the smaller ones. Okay. They, they, you, they bend those ones for the rings and those ones. Okay. Uh -huh. So when they, they, this are example, they cut the iron rod into 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet for the pillars. I get in the point. So if a steel bender comes and tells you, buy two ton of this and one ton of that no now one ton of a 16 mm is about 70 pieces 70 pieces for a one ton of a 16 mm are you getting the point so if my total pillars is 25 and two full rod is giving me one set of a pillar and therefore Two multiplied by 25 pillars is giving me 50 pieces of 16 mm. Then if I should buy one ton, which is giving me 70 pieces, it means that I will use 50 pieces and then 20 pieces will be remaining. You understand? So in your shot right now, I'm giving you a full example. I said, if two full rod, I get that is the full length of an iron rod, two of them, okay, is giving me one set of a pillar. Then 25 pillars will give me how much? And therefore, two full rod multiplied by 25 pillars divided by one pillar is giving me 50 pieces of 16 mm full rod. 50 pieces. You understand? Yes. And therefore, if you look at the down, I've mentioned one ton of 16 mm is 70 pieces. So in this case, if I should use 50 pieces of them, I still have 20 pieces remaining. So for a normal standard four bedroom house, okay, assuming your pillars are even 30 pieces, you can still use 16 mm one ton and you are good to go. Are you getting the point? Mine, I have 25 pillars and therefore I'm using just 50 pieces of 16 mm. So if I should buy one ton of a 16 mm, I will use just 50 pieces of it and I will have a remaining of 20 pieces. Okay, if you go for one ton of 18 mm, you have 58 pieces. And therefore, you can only use 50 pieces and you have 8 pieces remaining. If you go for 14 mm, one ton, that's 95 pieces. So if you use 50 pieces, you have 45 pieces remaining. If you use, we can use 8, 8 mm are what we use for the rings. I'm getting it. And those one, they are 300 pieces. So you don't have to buy too much of that. You can buy 500 Ghana CDs of that for the rings. So you can estimate your iron rod from here. You don't need a steel bender to confuse you. You can estimate. First, you need to count the number of pillars you have on your foundation plan. Once you have the drawing, the first page will be the setting layout. The next page is the foundation plan. Ask them to give you the foundation plan. You'll see that they will do something like a square or in, in the drawing. Those are your foundation plan. Okay, so you count your pillars. 
And here you know, and workmanship for the steel bender should not be more than 1,000 Ghana cities. Okay? Yeah, because I'm telling you, this is their reality. Even when you go to KO for you where they buy the iron rod, there are steel benders there already. You can, then, you can even tell them to, to mold it for you and then bring it to the site. You don't have to even bring the steel bender to the site. And for them, they'll mold it for you from there and then the price will even be cheaper. Are you getting it? The price will be cheaper. So the pillar that my contractor is holding in his hand there, I, we did everything like per my calculation. That's why when you look at my cost, I'm, I keep telling people, I didn't spend that much for my four bedroom house. And mine is a simple four bedroom house. Okay, so now for the mesh, the one underneath, okay, um, we can use 12 mm for, for that one. And if we buy maybe 10 pieces of a 12 mm, iron rod test 10 pieces we can do all the mesh because one full rod can do about three mesh are you getting the point can do about three mesh so 10 or 15 pieces is okay you can do all your mesh so you don't have to you know give yourself too much headache 16 mm now i think it's go it's one ton is around seven thousand something okay seven thousand you can you can check those prices out and then you can decide so i'm giving you step by step estimation on a standard four bedroom house you don't have to spend so much like the last time i dropped the video i made mention that an estimate of 60 ghana cities should be able to do your entire foundation for you okay in that way i have included so many things you understand in my case i never spent that amount no 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 the approximate amount 30,000 for my foundation that was the year 2020. I believe by that time inflation was not that high. Are you getting the point? Yes, so now we are done with the foundation. You know the number of pillars you need, and you know the kind of iron rods that you're going to, to require. Then we go to the cement. Okay, now in estimating for your cement, you should know that okay, for a foundation for a normal standard four bedroom house once you know the quantity of blocks you can estimate the cement bags are you getting it so for a standard four bedroom house i would uh, let me say averagely we are going to use two thousand blocks averagely but mostly some people use one thousand five hundred depending on the design structure some people use one thousand seven hundred one thousand eight hundred but i want to give approximately two thousand but let's do some examples here. So if you're a little bit good in maths and algebra, this is easy for you. Every mason, okay, like I know, if 100 blocks, 100 blocks constitute to two bags of cement. Every mason lays 100 blocks per day, averagely. Some people lay 120 blocks per day. So averagely, if a mason is going to lay 100 blocks per day, that is constituting to two bags of cement per day that is for a mason and therefore 1500 blocks how many banks of cement do you need so here we go 1500 blocks times two bags of cement divided by 100 blocks and therefore you there you go you have 30 bags of cement so if a mason is going to lay a 1500 blocks he needs 30 bags of cement even this one, you probably have two bags or three bags remaining. I promise you. <laughs> yes, you have mostly about three bags remaining. So 1,500 blocks constitute to 30 bags of cement. This does not include casting of the pillars. No, this is just laying the blocks. This is not for the foundation concrete. No, laying of the blocks only. I want you to know how you can estimate the number of cement bags you want to buy because some contractors will say, oh, my 200 bags. Oh, my 150 bags. No, it's not true. Okay, so once you know in your mind that I'm going to use 1,500 blocks for my foundation, already you know that laying those 1,500 blocks, you have 30 bags of cement already. Then you move to the pillars and then the foundation concrete. We can estimate all of that. And therefore, if you have 2,000 blocks, you need 40 bags of cement. If you have 3,000 blocks, you need 50 bags of cement. Are you getting it? So if, assuming my foundation, a standard four bedroom, I'm going to lay 2,000 blocks for just the foundation, 
I will need 40 bags of cement for laying those 2,000 blocks. I get in it. All right. And if my pillars for the foundation, each pillar is going to take one bag of cement. I get in a point. One bag of cement. If each pillar is going to take. Because this I'm talking about you setting the mesh. I get in it. The mesh on the ground. Okay, if each pillar is taking one bag of cement, I, mean, I need 25 bags because I have 25 pillars. So therefore, I need 25 bags of cement for setting the pillars with the mesh underneath the foundation. So 25 plus 40 bags of cement is giving me how many? 65 bags of cement. Are you getting it? Then casting of the foundation concrete casting of the foundation concrete we can estimate another 30 bucks for that i get to my point or you can even say okay let me buy 50 bucks so already we have 65 40 for the 2000 blocks 25 for the pillars because my pillars are 25 so i'm using my as an example because we need that for setting the pillars 25 plus casting of the foundation concrete we can estimate 30 or 40 bucks Adding to the 65, it means that we have 115. So if you buy 120 bags of cement, you are ready to do your foundation and all of that. Are you getting the point? Okay. Now, that is done. The trench has been dug. Now the masons will come. The pillars are ready. The first day, they will do the setting of all the pillars. Are you getting the point? So in this case, like I mentioned, if each pillar setting, they will use one bag of cement to do the setting, which is invariable because it, it cannot be entirely true. Because one bag of cement will mix about two and a half wheelbarrow of a sand. I get no point to mix two and a half wheelbarrow of a sand, and then and then the stones will add up to it. So probably you end up using one bag of cement for two pillars, but to make it rich. You want to for your building to stand the, t the test of time, and even Hurricane and Madame Catherine and Madame uh, uh, whatever the name Madame Victoria, all of them, your building will stand it. You make it rich, so it will stand it. So one pillar, one bag of cement. Okay, twenty-five pillars. It means that you are setting those. So all the pillars will be set for the first day with the mesh going underneath they will pour a little bit of concrete on the ground initially they will pour some water you know on the ground and then they will push a small amount of concrete and will push the mesh on it and then they will set the pillars with a grid line that's why you need this wawa board all around and then the ropes will be crossing all around you know they need to make sure every pillar is 90 degrees 90 degrees they are standing once that is done the next day they will come and cast the entire foundation concrete i get in the point so we've done setting of the pillars and then casting of the foundation concrete casting of the foundation concrete so once that this one we can use 30 40 bags depending on you know the size and capacity of your foundation i get in the point yes so we've done that so Foundation concrete casted, all the pillars have been erected and set properly. You know the total cost of your iron rods, okay? You know that we need one ton of 16 mm, okay? So already, the height of the rod is 10 feet high, okay? 10 feet high, okay? Yes, so already one foot or 1.5, one and a half is already missing in the ground. Are you getting the point? So we are going to lay the blocks. So now we are ready to lay our blocks. This is what we call footing or block work. Okay, footings. This is what we call the footings or block work. Are you getting the point? So here is where you require the 2,000 blocks or 1,500 blocks, depending on the height you want to achieve. I normally say you should raise your, your footing work high higher than that of the road in order to avoid water when it rains you can imagine the recent flooding everywhere if your building structure is low you have water running into your room so raise your structure so therefore approximately 2000 blocks should be able to raise your structure up to about five costs 
So when you count the blocks, when they stack the block on each other from the foundation already, the depth of the foundation is 3 feet 6. So when you lay the blocks all the way up, okay, it should be about 4 feet high or even 5 feet because the iron rod is 10 feet. Are you getting it? If the iron rod is 10 feet already, 4 feet is heading to the ground. So 4 feet high is coming up. Are you getting the point? Yes. 4 feet is coming up high. So you need to lay the block all the way to about 5 feet or even 6 feet. Because we are looking, we are using the iron rod, the height of the iron rod to do our measurement. Are you getting the point? So if the height of the iron rod is 10 feet high, okay, already 4 feet is hidden down. Okay, so the block where should come a little bit around 5 feet or even 6 feet high. Then we have 4 feet remaining. Are you getting the point? Because we are going to cast the oversized concrete, which will be about 2 inches or even 3 inches thereabout. So if your block wear comes all the way to the height of the of the pillars around maybe six feet, that's okay. It's not bad. So you can see the footing work ha has begun, as you can see in your shot there. Okay, so we are going to look at how high the block work is going to come by counting the block stack up on each other. Are you getting the point? All right. So here we can estimate the workmanship of the mason. You know, most masons they put, oh, my contract, I know, so I did 10,000 for foundation. You know? I didn't know I did 10,000. You can't even tell. Let me guide you. Okay, from here, I think you people have to start giving me some money. A lot of people have advised me to create a gold fund me account. I think I deserve something. You understand? So I will definitely create a gold fund me, and then you people can share, give me whatever you feel like giving me. I'll, I'm ready to take it. So amazing lays a hundred to 120 blocks per day. So let me take the average. A mason is laying 100 blocks per day. For me, that's how I go by it. So if he laying 100 blocks per day, which equals or constitutes to two bags of cement, which I explained earlier. So here I'm going to work on the block work. A mason is laying 100 blocks per day, constituting the two bags of cement. So let's come to one mason plus one labor a mason and a laborer a mason normally charge 190 80 depending on the location those in accra they charge too much but for me i pay 90 ghana cities for a mason and a laborer i pay 80 ghana cities are you getting the point so if a mason and a laborer 90 plus 80 that's 170. hence if a mason lays blocks a hundred blocks which is constituting to 170 Ghana cities per day that is a mason and the laborer both of them should lay a hundred blocks per day which is 170 Ghana cities per day then 1500 blocks how much is a mason supposed to take therefore 1500 blocks multiplied by 170 Ghana cities divided by 100 blocks and that should give you 2,250. So if a machine is to lay 1,500 blocks, just laying of the blocks, you're supposed to pay him 2,250 for 1,500 blocks and this will take him 15 days. And mostly he can even use uh, 4 days to even lay this block. Yeah, because he will bring an additional mason and a laborer and then they will share that 2,550. Because I'm using the standard one mason, one laborer. So regardless of the amount, if there are four masons, they are going to share that, that amount because the higher the masons, the lesser the days. Are you getting the point? If the masons are more, the days will reduce because this is one mason laying for 15 days. So if the masons are two, it will be how many? That's a half of that. If the masons are three, that's a quarter of the 15 days. So if a mason should lay 2,000 blocks, his workmanship is 3,400 for 20 days. And if a mason should lay 3,000 blocks, his workmanship is 5,100 Ghana cities for 30 days. Now, mostly we, we can cushion them in order to you know, make them do a better job for you. So you can run it up and say, okay, who took 1,500 blocks? Instead of me to give you 2,550, let me give you 3,000. Are you getting the point? 
or let me give you 3,500. And that, that is a bad start. And this is how much I pay. I don't pay more than this. I don't pay more than this. And then this is just laying of the blocks. And then casting of the pillars. I need one mason and four laborers. So if one mason, four laborers, if I put that together, 90 plus 80, the 80 by 4, 80 by 4 laborers put together, it should give me 410 Ghana cities. They will cast the pillar because this is only for the foundation. And the height of the foundation is not that high. I get it. The, for the pillars they are going to cast is not more than uh, six feet nor seven feet. No, it's not more than that. So 500 Ghana cities, a mason, one mason plus four laborers because two will be mixing the concrete and then two will be carrying the concrete to the mason. And the mason will be there and be pouring it into the boxes or the pillars. You understand? One mason is enough for that because this is just a foundation work. If you want to have two masons, that is up to you. That is your decision. I get the point. So you can see, count the blocks. One, two, three, four, five. So this is five cores. I get it. So probably we can say this about five feet. Because there, yeah, we can see this about almost about five feet high. I get the point. So in this case, we, we are looking at the height of the iron rod. And then we need to make sure we raise our structure such that it will be higher and then when it rains it will not be we will not be affected so your structure should be higher than that of the main road so you look at the level of the main road and then you raise your structure okay so now we got into this level you can look look at the pillars look at the height that is remaining this is somewhere around maybe about two feet or even one point something high depending on the area because some places might be a little bit higher depending on the level of the of the ground okay if the land is not that level some places are slopey some places are deeper so you have the iron rods looking shorter but if the ground is a bit level you see that iron rod is even longer you understand so yeah that's it so from here you see the pillars have not been casted yet now, this is where you use the 30 pieces of the bush cut board that you bought. This is where you are going to use them. Because you don't have to buy any wawa board again. So these 30 pieces of the wawa board, one piece of wawa board can be cut into three. Because most of the, the length of this wawa board, some of them are 15 feet. You get a point, 15 feet. Some are 13 feet, depending. So if 15 feet, you can cut this into three. And then you, you cast one pillar. Okay, so you don't have to buy any extra board again. So all these boards will be removed because from here we don't need the boards anymore. Most of the work have been completed from here. This is the foundation work. So you don't need the wawa board and the pegs. The pegs will be used as a supporting, you know, supporting the, the, the board in order for the concrete not to push it backwards. So you can use the pegs. Some people even use blocks to support it. Some people will tell you, buy me bamboo. You, you don't even need bamboo here. Yeah, you don't even need bamboo here. You can use the pegs to, to do that kind of work. And if there are some blocks at the side, they can use that to even support the, the board. And then they cast the pillars. You understand? And these pillars can all be casted in a day. But some people will like to you know, take money from you. They'll try to do it in two days. For me, I will go with one day. So once that is done, that foundation work is done, now we apply what we call bitumen. Bitumen coating is a waterproof coating. You understand? I borrowed this picture from a lady who is a subscriber on my channel. And yes, I'm going to borrow her building as well for, for, for teaching purposes. So bitumen, she bought it at 180 Ghana cities, but some people are even buying it at 300 Ghana cities. You go to Accra, Opera, it is there. They have different, different varieties. You decide which one you want. She bought hers 180 Ghana cities per gallon. Per gallon. Okay, this is bitumen coating or waterproof coating. Go to Opera at the back there. You, with the coaching, you will see a lot of shop. This, you will see a lot of material shop on the same line. They sell all the materials that you need. They are all there. If you go to those shops around Spinters Road or where your locations, they will sell it to you double the price. I get in it. 
So it's going for 180 Ghana cities. You need about seven or eight gallons. You understand? Yeah. Depending on the, the how big your, your 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 foundation work is. You understand? So look at the height of the foundation. Okay. Look at the height of the foundation. This this is okay. Very high. And then this is how the coating comes. So you can see the after the blog work, look at the, the, the remaining length of the iron rods. You understand? Almost about one foot or even less than that. I think this, this one, they, they increase the blocks too much. But for me, it's okay. Because looking at the landscape, if it rains heavily, water will gush through this area. So they needed to raise the structure very high. You understand? So yeah, so this is how you apply the b 2 bend apply it all around so these are some of the factors that makes your building cost goes high because in my case i didn't apply none of this you understand so if i say i spend thirty thousand for my foundation work you can understand and the cost of this is not that much so for me there's no bickering about this i can still apply this at the exterior for the interior i cannot for the ex external part, I can still apply them. I just have to dig down and then apply it, and that's it. I read me. So once that is done, you move on to filling in the gravels. Now we have applied the bitumen. After the bitumen have been applied, then you move on to filling in the laterite or gravels. Some people say laterite, some people say gravels. Okay, depending. We want a good soil that can, you know, sink properly. You understand? So gravels. Is what I know. Some people say laterite is also different. I don't know where they get the difference from. So what, whichever way, you just pour in the gravels. Okay, pour in the gravels and level it properly. Once it is level, you need to rent a caterpillar. So this, and what caterpillar will take about 1,000 per day. You can rent them per day. They can even rent them per hour, but hour is not, is not the best. You rent them per day. If an hour, maybe four hours, they can complete that for you, that's okay. And then once that is done, you can leave it for the rains to, to pour, uh, the rains to pour on it, or you can go and buy water, and that is another cost. For me, I don't want to buy water. So I, I allow it to sink properly by itself. The rains will pour on it, you understand? If you go and buy uh, gallons of water, you, you increase your cost. And that is why your cost is going up to five hundred thousand dollars for foundation. Uh -huh. It doesn't have to cost you that much. In my case, look at the length of my iron rods. Okay, this is almost about two feet remaining at the top. Okay, two feet. Some places are even shorter, depending on the landscape, as I made mention of. Are you with me? So from here, some people rent a compactor, a compactor to come and compact it. In my case, I didn't rent a compactor. You see, there are so many ways you can reduce cost. That's why I did a German concrete. And then somebody came to write some trash down there. Are you with me? So a German concrete is what I went for. There's no need for me to go and rent a compactor. This is an extra added cost. Okay. And then here we have, after the compactor have compacted the soil, you need plumbing works. Yeah, the plumbing material with the workmanship should not cost you more than 2500 See, I'm basing my argument on a four-bedroom, five-bedroom standard house. Okay, I'm not talking about a mansion somewhere. No, no, no. I'm talking about a standard four-bedroom. All the uh, as real estate people, they are building four-bedroom, four-bedroom, four-bedroom house. And their houses, are, the, the building rooms are even, the rooms are even smaller. This, I'm talking about a standard 15 by 15 room size or 15 by 16 room size. Are you getting it? So plumbing material, you can buy interplast or duraplast. You don't have to buy pressure pipe from here. You can buy the normal interplast is okay. They are also durable. Pressure pipe will be more expensive for you. So in my case, I didn't cast the entire surface. I didn't rent a compactor to do anything. You understand? I just went with a German concrete. Someone was trying to explain German concrete uh, in my earlier video, and mostly they don't understand. This is a German, this is a terminology we apply. Instead of from here, I would have compacted the soil and then laid DPM, downproof membrane, and then cast the entire surface, which we call oversight concrete. We call that oversight concrete, but I did not do any of that. Okay, 
I would have covered this whole thing with the black rubber, which is the downproof membrane. After the compacting, plumbing work, okay, then casting of what we call oversight concrete. But I didn't do any of that. I just did what we call German concrete. The essence of that, I'm not in a hurry. By working on the sand, it will compact. Rain will pour on it. I don't have to buy extra gallons or tanks of water. That is another cost. Ground beam, you can see an iron rod. Yes, ground beams helps the structure not to crack when it is settling down. Every building, after some time, it settles down in the sand. So once it settles down and you don't have a ground beam in them, you might have a, a crack coming from the foundation. And you know, as per building code, if there's a crack at the top, it's okay. But if there's a crack in the foundation, they condemn your building. You understand? Your building is no longer strong. So the foundation is key. Emphasize more on your foundation. Are you getting the point? Yes. So in, there are so many ways to reduce cost. And does not mean you should do a shoddy work or a shortcut. You follow the normal process. Are you getting the point? Yes. So from, from beginning up to here, if you're building a standard four-bedroom house, like I made mention of, okay, you have your hall, you have your kitchen, your kitchen store, I don't care how big it is, if it's a two by two, that's two meter by two meter, you have your utility room, you have your laundry room, okay, that's where you're going to place, I don't like it when you place your, your washing machine in your kitchen, I don't know where you get that style from though. But washing machine should be have its separate room, a laundry room. The size of that should be about 1.5 or 2 meter by 2 meter. You understand? A laundry room. You have a visitor's room, okay, with a bathroom within. We have visitor's toilet. And then we have a, a staircase going upstairs if you want to do a normal, you know, story building. If it's just a ground floor, then you have all your bedrooms with bathrooms in them. With a visitor's toilet, your big hall, there's a corridor, there's a big kitchen, and all of that. You shouldn't spend more than 60,000 Ghana cities. I'm repeating 60,000 Ghana cities. The 60,000, I'm including the compactor, the downproof membrane, the bitumen, the up, if you have to buy water. I've added all of that. If you want to eliminate the compactor, the concrete mixture, and all of that, I believe you'll not even get to 60,000. Okay. Yes. So the plumbing works here. The plumber workmanship is not even, it should be more than 1,000 Ghana cities. You can ask, my plumber will not charge you more than 1,000 Ghana cities for, for, for the foundation work. He will never charge you more than that. If he charge you, then he's just testing you to see if you pay. Uh -huh. If you ask him to reduce, he will definitely reduce. Plumbing material should not be more than 1,500. Looking at the current inflation, I believe it will cross uh, somewhere around 1,700 or 1,800 because the plumbing works here are not that much. Bathroom and then kitchen, WC and that's it. Sewage and then, you know, normal waste, you understand? Yes. So you can see the iron rod that I use here is 16 mm. I use 16 mm for my foundation work and you can see the height that is remaining. Are you getting it? So lovely people, Thank you for watching. I'll bring you another episode where I talk about the superstructure. This is just phase one and it's 60,000 Ghana cities. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.